end the lockdown, save lives, love one another. So what does it mean to save lives? In the coronavirus time, there's clearly been a very narrow focus on the effects of this particular horrible um, virus. And um, let's talk about being saved and saving lives for a few moments today. In Acts chapter 16, verse 31, um, there's the sort of centerpiece of the amazing story of Paul and the jailer in Philippi. Terrible earthquake, uh, singing in the prison, uh, Paul and Silas set free, just uh, an exciting story. Uh, but the jailer is terrified, terrified because if the prisoners escape, uh, he's going to be killed. He's even going to take his own life. And Paul wants to protect his physical life, but also introduce him to some spiritual life, which Jesus can bring. And so Acts 16.31 says, what must I do to be saved? That's the jailer's question. And of course, uh, Paul tells him he's got to believe on Jesus and follow him in order to embrace this spiritual life. Uh, there's been a uh, obsession with the single issue of the virus during these months, as one might expect given the pandemic. Uh, but part of it is fueled by uh, secular society's fear of death. One of the few things that be, can be controlled. We're all going to die. Uh, and because uh, our current society, Western society, hasn't come to terms with death and dying particularly uh, well, uh, it's perhaps the thing above all uh, that is feared. Uh, obviously, we want to save physical lives. We don't want the tragedy of bereavement to be felt unnecessarily uh, by families uh, around our country or around the Western world. So it's our job to do our best to preserve life. And of course, life matters to Christians. We do treasure it. We do want it to be uh, honoured. And we're consistent in that view. We want to support and treasure life in the womb. We want to support and treasure young life. And we want to support and treasure the lives of the elderly. Uh, but more than that, we don't just want to support physical life. We want to embrace spiritual life. We want to save lives, actually, in this second sense. And as Christians, we mustn't forget that in all the fuss around the pandemic. Our faith demands our sharing of this Christ life with others. We believe that Jesus does save from wrong, that he does forgive what the Bible calls sin and cleanse it and prepare us for an eternity with him. And that the salvation message has never been more relevant than it is today. Women and men need their lives saving in this spiritual sense to embrace the love of Christ and to know his transforming, born-again, rebirth experience in their whole beings. And, and so as this uh, pandemic seems to crowd out anything else, let's remember that while we focus on saving physical lives, that we never forget that part of our task is to alert the world to the need for spiritual saving of lives, for spiritual salvation. So let's pray for the least and the lost and the last in society to experience not just physical protection, but spiritual life as they invite this Jesus in transforming power to come and to dwell within them and to be their saviour and Lord, and therefore to know life in all its fullness even in a time when we feel locked down, even coming out into these beautiful surroundings doesn't uh, deal with inner lockdown. And so let's pray today for an explosion of grace and goodness and saving power from Jesus around the world.